Hello, AP Calculus students. Mr. Record here for yet another video covering differential equations and more importantly, the applications that surround such types of things. Uh, we got a series of growth and decay videos um, that I have put out. Uh, the first one dealt with um, a radioactive isotope plutonium being released in the Chernobyl nuclear accident. And then we move on to this one, which is about a population of fruit flies, and then there's a couple of others that follow uh, that you might be interested in. But let's take a look at this guy and start to get the ball here rolling. We got an experimental population of fruit flies that increases according to the law of exponential growth. Now we're gonna come back to that sentence. It's a very important sentence. It says there are 100 flies after the second day of the experiment and 300 flies after the fourth day approximate how many flies were in the original population, round to the nearest fly. So if you want to put this into some context, let's say that you've got some person working in a lab at some you know, university, a biology lab, and they're monitoring these fruit flies from the time that they arrived, and they discovered that, oh, doggone it, we forgot to write down how many flies were in the population when they first arrived. So there is a way that they might be able to extrapolate that information. So if you look at the very first sentence, that's the key here. It says, suppose that an experimental population of fruit flies increases according to the law of exponential growth. What that is saying is that the rate of change of the population with respect to time varies directly with the population. And I'm going to use P for my, or for my dependent variable here. Now, it's very likely if you've been solving problems like this for a time, you might know exactly where this is headed. And it's really important that I think you get comfortable with this idea because it's gonna save you a lot of time in solving these problems. But this particular law of exponential growth just means that if you were to solve this differential equation, it would produce something that looks like this. P equals, sometimes we like to call that kect, kect. Now, I'm gonna just very, very quickly talk through about how you can arrive at kect. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do this for all of my videos, but to see what's going on here, you're just going to separate, excuse me, you're gonna separate and get the P's on the left side and the, the T's on the right. Now remember the K is just acting like a constant. And then if we integrate both sides of this expression of this equation, we would have the natural log of the absolute value of P on the left side. And then of course, KT plus some constant on the right side. Now the goal at this point would be to solve for the P. So one way to certainly accomplish that is to use each side as the power of a base E. It's a perfectly a legal maneuver. You're doing the same thing to both sides. And then we will find out that E to the LN essentially produces just what's after the argument of the natural log. And then on the right side, we could split this apart as E to the KT times E to the C. And then at this point, we can reason out that that e to the c is really just the same as some other arbitrary constant c. Now, I want to be really careful. Maybe I'll use c o or some, some other subscript in those two instances to make sure that we differentiate it from this value of c. So we can see how we've got the kect on the right side. And then for the purpose of, of this problem, I don't want to go into a lot of detail about uh, why we take away the absolute values. Under normal circumstances, if we are dealing with values in the positive uh, range of this particular expression, then we're going to be okay to do that. And in this particular case, we're not going to have a negative population of fruit flies. So that's how you can produce kect very, very quickly, but you can't beat just memorizing it. And, and really, you just have to follow the, the words that say something to the effect of the law of exponential growth that's common. You might often see the rate of change of the population is directly proportional to the population, and that works as well. All right, so what's next? We've got 
our, our equation? Well, we can start thinking about ways that we might be able to find certain values in this because it's going to be important to understand that finding this value of k is monumental in proceeding further. So we can start using our information. We know that there were 100 flies after the second day. Well, that's just another way to say that the ordered pair 2 and 100 can be In this case, 100 equals C E to the 2 times K. And if we do Now, as you can see, this is a little problematic in that we still have two variables in both equations. Remember that E is not a variable. But if you've got two equations and you're missing the same two variables, that's not a bad thing because we could use a system of equations and we can solve these. And so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do next. And it seems to me that it would be probably easiest to solve for E in both equations. 